Welcome back to the Bible Reading Project. It is Tuesday, Hebrews chapter 10, 39 verses all week long. Reading the Bible every single day. How many excuses? Zero. Zero. Sponsored by Black Rifle Coffee. Best coffee ever. We've not gotten a dime yet or t-shirts or any support, but we're throwing it out every single day. Yeah. Black Rifle Coffee. Boom. Boom. Is Supply the way to go. our addiction. How are you feeling several days past your birthday? Any aches? Any body pains? You feel still feel the same? You, I feel great. You feel great. 31. Mm-hmm. Tell me something that was extravagant about your birthday. That just, man, I'll always remember my 31st birthday. Um, when Pastor Mark Venmoed me $20. 25. 25. <laughs> you want to edit that, me. right? <laughs> yeah. That's how much it touched you. Beep, beep. Why don't you? $25. Why don't you Venmo me five back so you won't be a liar? <laughs> okay. How about that? Yeah, that sounds That's good. okay. Yeah. I know she didn't even mention the car I got you. Yeah. This, <laughs> does this not move you? Not as a, well, because I, I wanted to know what, and you didn't even mention Jackson Storm at all. Right, that's true. Okay, I'll leave it there. That's yeah. good. It was your birthday. So <laughs> so something, of course, the money I gave you that I didn't give you, right. that you said was 20, but it was actually 25, 25. but something else besides the car I gave you. <laughs> so it touched you. Um, uh, you bought me donuts. Wow, that was touching. Is there any other people in your life that are friends other than me? That yeah, gave you Derek anything? and Valerie. And what did uh, he give you? Uh, they threw me a little shindig. Oh, cool. Yep. Like at their home. At or? their home uh, and surprise you with friends and stuff. I uh, wasn't really a, s- a surprise, but okay, people did come. That's awesome, man. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. You feeling better? Feeling good at thirty one? Feeling good. At Moving 30. on. Praise God, man. Hebrews chapter ten. You ready? Ready. I noticed yesterday you almost cried. <laughs> It's yeah. okay. Well, these lights are hot, and they then are you hot. put me the on the spot. <laughs> right. But that's why when and I didn't there like. is zero prep. This yeah. Everything about Bible Reading Project is raw. Yeah. There's no, I'm going to ask you these questions. Yeah. It's digging the Bible out together, and you're going to have to be bold. There are people out there that may be watching, right. and you're going to have to be bold with this. Yeah. You can't hold back. <laughs> All right? Right. Okay. And even that laugh is you holding back. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I know that yeah. laugh. It's, there it is. See? <laughs> Yeah, I know what it is. Yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. Verse three, uh, chapter 10, verses one through three. So just three verses of the 39. We're going to pull it out. It may sting a little bit. Hebrews chapter 10 is what we're reading. Here we go. The old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow, a dim preview of the good things to come, not the good things themselves. The sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again, year after year but they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. If they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped for the worshipers would have been purified once for all time. And then this is what we held on yesterday, again today. And their feelings of guilt would have disappeared, but instead those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year. Here's what we're talking about all week. Yes. God goes to extravagant lengths to have relationship with you, and then this of why we can't. I'm reminded too much of my failures. Mm-hmm. And this thing of uh, my guilty conscience never changes. Yeah. I'm always guilty. I'm always bargaining with God. I never measure up. I don't like who I am. I hate the way I look. I don't like my voice. I don't like my life. I don't like my hair. I wish I was different. Mm-hmm. All these things that come, and you think, well, all that's just kind of me personal, right? Mm-hmm. But when you really dive into the Bible and understand I'm created by God, right? And that God has, you know, fashioned me, so to speak, yeah. uh, and knew I was coming, and then says, well, I want to have a relationship with you, and here's why. Not just so you can be giddy about each other, mm-hmm. but so I can use you. Right. And I have found that one reason people never come into this depth of relationship with God into a, and this is what I mean, not that they don't believe they're going to heaven mm-hmm. or they don't go to church. I mean, they can be in church and singing all the right songs and giving their money, but I've noticed that you really don't become effective for God to be used by God mm-hmm. until you learn how to conquer your failures. It's good. Because God says, I want to do this with you, and it's like, dude, what if I fail? Mm-hmm. What if I blow it? I want to witness, but what if? I would like to pray for people, but I'm scared. Uh, or failures of, God's just never going to be pleased with me. I'm a, I'm a royal failure. So years ago... I was in college, so 1984, probably. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even born yet. I know. Isn't that weird? Yeah. 
Like I was already educated and you weren't even on the planet. <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> and, and, and you're smarter than me, which is even more mind blowing that you've far surpassed me. Here's the deal. This guy was a Presbyterian Calvinist. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I was not, right. I was not Calvinist. And so we started debating mm-hmm. and then he said this, he said, Oh, you know, we all sin every day. And that just kind of took me back. I'm like, mm, wait, am I sin every day? Mm-hmm. And I really was thinking, did I sin today yet or yesterday? And he was 1,000% convinced that there's no way me and you can live on this planet and mm-hmm. not sin every single day. Mm-hmm. You're going to disappoint God every day. Get yeah. over it. You're going to let God down every day. Get over it. Yeah. It's who you are. You're a sinner Mm -hmm. saved by grace. And then he commented a phrase that kind of was popular and maybe still is, I'm just an old sinner Mm -hmm. saved by grace. Right. You know, that bumper sticker, be patient with me. God's not done with me yet. Right. (laughs) Kind of all the excuses we make of our failures. But when what I read is I will remove every guilty conscience. Yeah. I will purify you from every sin. Right. I will make you holy. And I will set you apart to myself. I mean, this whole chapter of what's going on. And then he says this, but but nevertheless, rather than you really being free, uh, religion is going to remind you every day. Mm-hmm. You're a failure. You can't measure up. You can't do it. And then it said this, and I'm going to remind you yeah. all the time. Right. I'm going to remind you, you can't do it. You're not good enough. You're not godly enough. You're not anointed enough. You're not spiritual enough. Over And I think those things keep us out of it. Verse mm-hmm. verse 3, but instead those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins. Is there something, a failure in your life, or a consistent reminder that you struggle with that's just like a reminder of your failure, a reminder of your, oh, God's mad at me, God's not pleased with me, that creeps up, you know, in a consistency in your life? And if not, is there a failure that you dealt with, and how did you overcome it? Yeah, I think there is. I mean, uh, well, yeah, I know that there is. That um, when I I constantly feel like a failure when I first of all feel like I'm not doing enough, and I what I mean by that is just running, 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 being for lack of a better word, being really busy. Okay, so busy makes you feel worthy. Right. Okay. But then the catch-22, Ryan gets so busy that he overcommits. And, you know, we talk about this a Mm -hmm. lot with our relationship is that I get so busy then, I get so committed that I forget some of the commitments that I made and then become a disappointment or drop the ball on what I've committed to do, but I have all these other things to do and then – Now I become so overloaded that I'm caught between a rock and a hard place, essentially, Mm -hmm. and then feel like more of a failure because I, my my personality is I don't want to disappoint anybody. And Mm -hmm. now I'm disappointing myself Mm -hmm. because I disappointed them. Mm -hmm. And then the things aren't going as well over here as they should be. And so, um, and then how does that, because that's kind of letting other people down, you trying to please them, make them happy. How does that impact your relationship with God, if at all. Um, when you feel like, God, I've just failed somebody. Man, I just blew it. Man, I'm so swamped. Do you see that impacting your relationship with God as well? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I do. See, in, in a lot of ways, it makes me feel like, mm, God, I thought I was supposed to do, this is what you called me to do, but... Why am why are all these things going wrong? Because if you called me to do it and you anointed me to do it, then things should be going right. But they're not going right. They're going terribly wrong. Everything's on fire in my life. And so now what? Mm-hmm. What did you really call me to do? Right. And where did I miss the mark? And because I missed the mark, now I'm a failure. And because I'm a failure, now I don't even feel worthy to do any of it. And so maybe I should just go recluse in the Appalachian Mountains. Oh, yeah. But I think it has to be that way because that is the essence of religion is to get you so busy that you get so far from God. Church Mm -hmm. of Ephesus, Revelation 3, man, you don't even love me like you used to. Right. You do all these great things. Right. But somewhere in this relationship, your love has has dwindled 
uh, for you know what what I'm looking for. And I find that my dad told me this years ago. He said, "Son, he said you won't ever accomplish anything great with God if you're always afraid of failing." Mm-hmm. He good. said, "You have to be willing to fail right. to live by faith." It's good. That's profound. Yeah, it is. I have to be willing to fail mm-hmm. to live by faith. Right. And uh, but I find that most people, and this is what I want to talk about tomorrow, don't know how to handle their failures, and we all fail. Right. We all do regretful things. We all do things we wish, and yet we come and say, "Oh, now Jesus forgives you." but I never know how to get over this failure. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus loves you, but I don't know how to quit being defined by it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to turn it into something that God can use for his glory. So my relationship with him, because this is my belief, my relationship with him becomes sweeter yeah. as I understand what he's trying to do, yeah. right? right? So, hey, thanks again. We'll jump yeah. in tomorrow and go Sounds even good. deeper. Thank you so much for hanging out with us for a little while, for about the last 12 minutes or so. I appreciate it. I want to leave you with this thought, and here it is. If you can use anything, God, you can use me. And if anybody comes across my path today that needs you, may I ever be so bold to lead them to you. Pray that prayer and watch what God will do with you. He'll use you greatly. Have a good day.